someone asked you whether bones of the biblical giants were ever found. He's confused. He thought the whole Nephilim story is based on the Mesopotamian Apkalu myth that was Judaized as a polemic. If that is the case, why didn't Mike simply say there wouldn't be any bones of the Nephilim in the first place? Why wouldn't we wouldn't expect archaeological evidence of a story based on a prior myth? I think the confusion here is is the word based on as opposed to being the point of reference. The Apkalu story from Mesopotamia is the is the reference point. It's the touch point. It's the backdrop. It's the backstory for the biblical commentary on an explanation of you know the sons of God and the giants and the post flood giants. Okay. It, it is the reference point. That doesn't mean that the these these biblical accounts are quote based on a myth. Okay, that that never you know that never happens, so these never happened, right? That that isn't that isn't what I'm saying. So I think that might be uh, the point of disconnect, maybe to helpfully hopefully illustrate it. I think there were you know such individuals as the Nephilim. Okay, let's take Goliath. Okay, I don't think Goliath, the Goliath story, is a non-historical thing. I don't think it's a myth. I don't think it's a a, a fairy tale. I think the the confrontation between David and Goliath happened. And I also don't think that the large Anakim targeted in the conquest were fictional beings. And that isn't what, I, what I'm saying in the book or have said elsewhere. All I'm saying is that the way these people get talked about and the way their, their origins get talked about and their role in biblical history and all that stuff, that goes back to the Apkalu story. The Apkalu story provides the framework for understanding what the Bible says about these things, because it's the backstory. These are the touch points because the biblical writers are responding to a Mesopotamian version of events, what Mesopotamians believe about X, Y, or Z. And they're, they're denying the validity of Mesopotamian thinking, Mesopotamian religion at certain points. So none of that means that, that, you know, we would never expect to find a, a, Nephilim or Anakim, or in the case of Goliath, a Rephaim skeleton. I don't. I don't expect really such skeletons to have survived from periods earlier than the monarchy, especially because the cultures of Canaan didn't embalm. All right. I mean, just just think about it. it there were. Let's say. Let's just go back to 2000 BC. 2000 BC till let's just say the first century. So we got a 2000 year period and, you know, we've got, let's just restrict it to Canaan, uh, you know, the quote unquote promised land and the Transjordan area. How many people do you think lived and died in that 2000 year span, two millennia? Okay. It's going to be at the very least hundreds and hundreds of thousands. I would say if you did the math, you're going to wind up with a few million people. Okay, we don't have a few million skeletons that have been discovered by archaeologists. A tiny fraction of all the people who ever lived in that 2,000-year span have been recovered. And most of those are fragmentary in some way. Why? It's because they didn't embalm. Or the, the the natural conditions weren't you know optimal, you know by accident, okay to preserve a skeleton. We just don't have that many. Period. So I wouldn't expect there to be hordes and hordes and hordes of giant skeletons dotting Canaan because there aren't hordes and hordes and hordes of regular skeletons dotting Canaan. If you looked in in the like the database, you know of uh, of human remains, you know if, uh, Tel Aviv University, I think, is the place that keeps this database. Uh, it's very rare to have any skeleton recovered in any archaeological dig older than a thousand BC, and that's just because of nature. People die; their bones turn to dust. They don't get preserved unless you do deliberate things to preserve them, and and the ones that do get preserved are typically preserved because, again, the conditions in which that 
body fell or was buried happened to be optimal for some reason. There are environmental factors there. You do, the, the math just doesn't work to expect hordes and hordes and heaps and mounds of skeletons waiting to be discovered. It just doesn't work that way, again, because of the, these factors. So I don't expect there to be an abundance of giant skeletons. You might find one occasionally here and there. That wouldn't shock me. And again, when I'm talking giants, I'm talking people who were between six and seven feet tall, again, because of the average height of the skeletons that have been found for men were a little over five feet, five, three, five, four. And again, I'm not inventing that figure. That figure is the result of actual measurements that are kept in database records of human skeletons from this period in these places. Okay, I don't have to invent the number. That is the number. So, you know, kind of a, a roundabout way, you know, to address the question. I think the fundamental disconnect is the difference between based upon and the reference point. And then the whole thing about the skeletons is, you know, they might be out there. I don't know. But if a, a really big skeleton has survived, again, you, you know, there, there's not going to be many of them because there aren't many skeletons, period. And, you know, those who would fit into this class, you know, the Anakim, for instance, are going to be a fraction of the original population. It's not the whole population of Cain. It's not even close. There's nothing in the Bible that ever says that. Uh, although you'll have people run around that talk about all of the people that the Israelites had to drive out were giants. It never says that. It, it specifically says that Anakim were encountered in the land in various places. That, that's all it says. You know, and a few of them get away and escape, you know, to the, to the Philistine cities, you know, from which comes Goliath. I mean, it, this is the, the giant thing almost becomes like Plato's Atlantis. You know, Plato has like three lines on Atlantis, but now I can buy whole books on Atlantean technology and Atlantean civilization, Atlantean education, Atlantean science. You know, where does where does all this material come from about Atlantis? The answer is people's heads. Okay, because Plato had like three lines about it. Nobody's, you know, digging this kind of stuff up where lots of other people are talking about Atlantis. Uh, and, and these are like factual records. It's literally made up. And unfortunately, we, we get a lot of this kind of thing in, in, in biblical and Christian circles about giants. Uh, we, we do mental extrapolations and then we, we, we treat them like they're discoveries or research. No, they, they, it, it came out of your head is is really what we're what we're talking about here. So again I try to be data driven and that's how I approach you know the subject and you know this question.